Hi everyone, uh, Greg Phillips here. I'd like to present a few of the best practices I've adopted while preparing Power BI reports. Uh, throughout my own Power BI learning over the past few years, I've consumed many online resources which have been instrumental, but I've quickly become overwhelmed by the content and I ended up making my own notes. I thought I'd try to collapse those notes into an easy to digest PowerPoint file and wanted to take this opportunity to present this. Uh, this presentation will be available to Enterprise DNA members in the near future where hopefully it will be useful. Um, this is by no means an exhaustive list or even the top practices. Uh, merely these are some of the ones that I've incorporated into my own development. I have discussed this topic with other Power BI users to get their input, but again these are my own takeaways. Also, the best practices will evolve over time as new and enhanced capabilities are introduced in the Power BI application and are presented by the Power BI uh, community. So uh, what we'd like to do today is to present the first of four pillars of Power BI development. Um, I've thrown in a pre-development setup, a uh, pre-pillar if you will. The four pillars are data loading and data transformation, data modeling, DAX calculations, and reports and visualizations. Uh, we'll deal with the, the pre-development setup and the first pillar uh, today. Uh, first thing I want to mention is it's highly recommended to disable the auto date time feature uh, in Power BI. Uh, you can do this two ways. You can do this globally for all files by going to uh, file options and settings options global then data load disabling auto date time for all new files. Uh, you can also uh, disable it for the current file uh, by going to its uh, setting as well. Uh, the next thing I'd like to talk about is it's highly recommended to disable auto detect relationships. Uh, you can use the file options and settings options, current file, data load relationships section, and you can disable auto detect new relationships after the data is loaded. Uh, highly recommended. Um, the next thing to talk about is there are two uh, ways of interacting with visuals in Power BI reports. Uh, those interactions can be cross-filtered or they can be cross-highlighted. Uh, cross-highlighting is enabled by default in Power BI and uh, the way you can change this is to go again into file options uh, options, or sorry, file options and settings options and then for the current file in the report settings section you can change the visual interaction from cross highlighting to cross filtering. Let's just quickly have a look at that here. So right now what you AI by default uh, uses cross highlighting on uh, related uh, visuals and you can see that on these two uh, bar charts so when I click one channel, you'll see that the second bar chart, um, the selected portion is highlighted, remains in dark color, and the unselected portion stays in, in light color. So you can see the full shape doesn't change of the graph, but you only see the highlighted portions there. What you can do is you can change this if you like. Uh, file options and settings options current file, report settings, and you can change the default visual interaction from cross-highlighting to cross-filtering. Highly recommended to do that. Once you've done that, you'll see that the shape of your related uh, bar chart will change every time you make a selection or a group of selections and so on. These, um, that's a good practice to get into. All right, let's keep going. Uh, the next thing that I want to talk about is uh, separating your data set development from your report development. Um, basically, you can have a thick data set file. Um, it's published as a standalone data set that will have no visuals, uh, and you will have a thin uh, report um, file development that will use these published data sets. One of the advantages of publishing data sets separately is that you can use the endorsement process that's in the Power BI service to promote and certify data sets. 
and it's an ideal uh, practice to select an endorsed data set, preferably a certified one, when you're developing a new report. Next thing to talk about is to make sure that your uh, report has the dedicated dates table in it. Um, for example, you can use the extended date table that's available on the Enterprise DNA forum. Uh, you can copy and paste the M code into a blank query and we'll have the, uh, the link down below uh, for that. Um, the second thing to do once you do have a dedicated dates table is you need to mark it as such. Uh, and that enables it to be used by Power BI for the time intelligence calculations. A few other things about the date table. Uh, always ensure that your dates table is contiguous in that there's one row per day and it fully covers the edges of your fact tables. Uh, always add full years to the dates table. Um, and it's a good idea to add an additional future year to the dates table. Uh, to enable any future or forecast time intelligence calculations. Um, if you have too many days, uh, or sorry, if you have more days in your dates table than you want shown on your report, you can control uh, what's shown in slicers using the uh, is after today uh, column or the offset columns that are available in the, in the filter pane. The next thing to talk about is really whether you need to be doing a report at all. Um, as you're doing it, check to see is there an existing report I can use to fulfill my need. Uh, if there's no report, is there an existing data model I can use to fulfill my need? Uh, if not, uh, is there an existing certified data set I can use? Is there an existing promoted data set I can use? Is there an existing data set I can use? Or uh, do I actually need to start from scratch? Uh, the next thing to talk about is staging and referencing data. Uh, when you're loading a flat data table, you may have facts and dimensions in the same uh, table, like an Excel file or something like that. So when you do uh, load that, uh, move it into a staging queries section and rename it to something you would accidentally use in a visual by mistake, like raw data or something like that. Um, once that's in your staging query section, you can uncheck enable load. The next thing you want to do is to create a reference of that table for each fact and lookup dimension uh, and rename uh, the tables appropriately. Um, edit each reference and keep only the needed columns and remove duplicates. Uh, the next thing you can do is to organize your data model. Um, as you can see here, put it in its own group. Uh, I always have a, uh, a group in my data models called data model, and that has all the tables that I'm going to be using in visuals. Uh, next thing to talk about is performance. Uh, one of the biggest things that impacts performance is data volume. So strive to reduce the amount of data to be loaded as much as possible. Uh, follow the axiom, if you don't need it, don't retrieve it. Um, it's much easier to add new things into a report than it is to take things out of a report. Uh, also, when you put too many things into a report, you're paying a penalty for performance that you may not uh, need to be paying. So, um, preferably, you'll do your filtering in the source. Um, if you can't do it in the source, uh, you can, in Power Query, you can use the Auto Filter drop-down arrow um, at the right uh, header of a column um, to filter just the fields that you're interested in, or just the values, sorry, that you're interested in for that column. Uh, also in the source, you can also reduce the number of columns that are being uh, shown by using the Choose Columns drop-down and selecting only the columns that are of interest to you. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention on that was that um, you can use either choose columns or remove columns. So on I uh, recommend, and others have recommended uh, using choose columns as a best practice because it's easy to go back to um, if you change your mind at a later date and it allows you uh, a quick way to do it through the UI rather than having to go into uh, 
uh, the advanced editor and editing the M code directly. Uh, what exactly is query folding? Uh, query folding is an attempt by a Power BI to combine several data selection and transformation steps into a single data source query. And how does one determine if uh, a query is being folded? Well, if you right click on the applied steps of a, of a, uh, a query, um, you can see if view native query is grayed out or not. Uh, if it's grayed out, then the query is not being folded. If it is not grayed out, then the query can be folded. And let's just take a look, a quick look at that. So I'll go into transform data here, go into power query, and in this table here, we can see um, if I right click on the navigation step, I can see that view native query is not grayed out, so I can select it, and I see a simple uh, SQL select statement. Here, if I go to the next step, after some filtering has been done, um, I go to view native query and I can see that the query is slightly changed. Uh, there's now a where clause that's been put on that, that query. If I go to the third step, once again I can right click on it and I can see that view native query is not grayed out, so I can select it one more time and I, select, I can see that there's even a greater uh, um, collapse of the three queries into one. So again, this is Power BI saying, I know the best way to get the data uh, into my model is to have the source do the work rather than me do the work. So that's uh, query folding. Okay. The next thing to talk about about query folding is what data sources can tip typically be used with query folding. Uh, standard objects in relational databases like tables and views can be used with query folding. Uh, custom SQL queries to, on relational databases cannot uh, use query folding and flat files and web data uh, cannot be folded. Um, what are some of the transformations that uh, can be used with query folding? Uh, filtering rows, uh, removing columns, renaming columns, uh, joins to other queries from the same data source can be folded. Uh, what are some of the transformations that cannot be used with query folding? Uh, the addition of index columns, uh, changing column data types, or merging and or appending queries from different data sources cannot be folded. Next thing on performance is uh, choosing the correct connectivity mode. Uh, import mode is the default and should be used uh, whenever possible as it offers the best report performance. Uh, direct query mode can be used if up to the minute data is desired, but just be aware that there, it can have a negative uh, performance impact, can and likely will have a negative performance impact. Finally, a uh, live connection mode is available when you're accessing data warehouses, for example, a, uh, an SSAS multi-dimensional cube. Uh, the next thing I want to talk about is the location of where uh, transformations are to be done. Uh, the best place to do them is in the source. Uh, if you can't do them in the source, do them in Power Query. If you can't do them in Power Query, then you do them in DAX. Uh, one nice way of putting this uh, is perform your data transformations as far upstream as possible and as far downstream as necessary. Another way uh, to say this is if you can do something in Power Query, you probably should. Um, again, if it's not something that's dynamic within the context of report session, please consider doing it in Power Query to simplify your DAX and increase your report performance. Uh, as far as the shape of your tables go, uh, I'd strive to make fact tables long and thin uh, and strive to make dimension tables short and wide. On naming and data types, uh, a few best practices around naming are using a consistent naming scheme uh, that's easy, under, easy to understand for report users. Um, use a consistent casing scheme that's easy to understand again for report users. Uh, rename your tables and your queries as necessary to conform to those naming and casing standards for your report. Uh, rename your columns as necessary uh, to conform to those naming and casing standards and also uh, rename your power query steps as necessary to make the steps self-describing. 
as you may not be the uh, person that's uh, the next maintainer of your report. Data types. Uh, Power BI does an excellent job of uh, assigning the correct data types uh, when importing data, but sometimes some adjustments are necessary. Um, as well, uh, one should ensure that columns in different tables that will be used as the linking columns between two tables are of the same data type. Uh, ensure that all of your date columns are date and are not text. Split your date time columns into separate date and separate time columns. Uh, and if you're not going to be using the date time directly. Um, and as a final step, uh, recheck your data types. Uh, make it a practice before hitting close and apply in Power Query to always recheck your data types since certain transformations can silently switch data types to text. Next thing to talk about is granularity. Uh, it's, one should strive to source your data at a consistent granularity uh, when you're combining different granularities in your solution. Uh, you'll have to use Power Query uh, preferably or DAX to uh, allocate the reference data appropriately. For example, if you have uh, your main sales data is at the, the daily level, uh, its granularity is day, uh, whereas your budget reference data uh, may be at the monthly level, so its granularity is monthly. Uh, there is a, um, an example of a budget allocation DAX formula on the Enterprise DNA website and that link will be down below. And that's it. Um, thank you very much for your time. Uh, thanks for watching. And I hope you found this, this video useful. If you did, please throw it a like. And uh, don't forget to subscribe to the Enterprise DNA YouTube channel uh, to ensure you're notified of any new content. Thank you very much. Bye.